In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing common reasons why your child throws food in the first place, and then a clear step-by-step -step guide on what to do in the moment. So let's just get right into it. Okay, let's get into the fun stuff. What to do in the moment <laughs> when your child goes to fling the food across the uh, floor. So here are some pro tips before I get in into the step-by-step -step guide based on your child's age. So pro tip number one is to avoid responding like it's an emergency. <laughs> Our children are, for better or for worse, very fascinated by our reactions and the more that we feed into this by responding in as if we're, it, this is an emergency and we're all flustered and stressed out, um, the more we're actually reinforcing the behavior. So just remind yourself, this is not an emergency. <laughs> Everything's gonna be okay. Maybe place down that plastic food mat if, you, if that will help you in alleviating that anxiety. But you wanna come from a very calm, confident, place as much as possible and pro tip number two is going to be to use a lot of positive reinforcement like praising um, to really prevent again I can't oh I can't stress that enough the best way one of the best ways to prevent behavioral issues in general um, and especially food throwing is to use a lot of praise when you do notice that they are eating their food or they're keeping their food on the table you really want to get intentional about noticing describing and praising that behavior because that is what you want to see more of and kids really eat up positive reinforcement so do that okay do not <laughs> <laughs> be afraid to shower them with praise good job for keeping the food on the table yay you're eating I'm eating too you know keep mealtime as fun and light as possible to minimize that stress and minimize the likelihood that they're gonna throw their food on the floor okay so for babies and young toddlers a lot of what you're gonna want to do in the moment is if you find that they're uh, um, about to throw their food or they have thrown their food you can say something as simple and very calmly is I can't let you do that food needs to stay on the tray um, and you can guide their hands to putting the food back on the tray um, and uh, then praise them for putting the food back on the tray even if they needed that help uh, you want to praise them as much as possible again keep it as fun and light as you can and then really end meal time if they continue to throw their food on the floor because really truly um, one of the biggest signs that your child is ready for meal time to be over is if they start playing with it Okay, so let's talk about toddlers, the older ones. So I'm thinking about ages two and up. Uh, one of the biggest things uh, is to set the expectation even before they sit down at the table. So you can say, okay, we're about to have uh, dinner. I expect you to keep the food on the table. If there's something that you don't like, feel free to put it in your no thank you bowl or no thank you plate or wherever you've decided that they can put the food. Ideally, you are sitting down with them and eating the meal with them. I Ideally, you're using a lot of those praises and positive reinforcement <laughs> to help prevent it. And then if they do go to throw their food, um, I suggest that you first ignore it. So you want to ignore like the first one or two throws um, because again, a lot of the times, especially for toddlers, they're looking for a reaction out of us. And so commonly this behavior can be minimized by just simply ignoring it and not drawing any attention to it and drawing your attention to maybe the other children that are at the table, drawing your attention to what you're eating. Um, and then as soon as they join you back at the table and they start eating or they just, you know, as soon as, basically as soon as they stop throwing, then draw your attention back to them um, and give them lots of praise and attention. Okay, now, if it continues and you're like, okay, ignoring is not helping to stop the behavior, then you wanna give them a simple warning. And you can say something like, Hey bud, if you continue to throw your food, I'm gonna think you're not hungry and I'm gonna end meal time, okay? So please eat your food or please keep the food on the on um, the table. So you wanna be very specific on what exactly you need them to do. Um, if you're struggling with getting your child to listen and struggling with your clear instructions, be sure to check out this video. I break down um, exactly how you can keep your instructions clear to increase the likelihood of your child complying. Um, so again be very specific on what you need and then after that if they continue to throw 
that's your sign that they're done and you can end meal time. Okay, so you can say, okay, looks like you're all done. Okay, again, we're not ruffled here, we're not frustrated. <laughs> ideally we've taken our deep breaths to the side and now we're just calmly and confidently without any judgment just ending mealtime okay I'll help you mealtime is over now another step that you want to do is once you've ended mealtime you want to involve them in the cleanup process okay so you can say something like okay it's time to clean up the food that went on the floor and you can give them a napkin give them a towel whatever to help clean up and you want to praise that as much as possible yay good job cleaning up thank you for your help now there's no you know food on the floor I really appreciate that thank you bud thank you right um and if they're on the younger side and they're struggling with that your first step is gonna be or you're gonna want to break it into st into steps so maybe the first step is to bring them to the area where the food is and give them the napkin and gently guide their hand to cleaning and praise them right we're not forcing it right it's very gentle um, we're very gentle in our approach and we're just kind of oh, okay great yay cleaning good job cleaning um, again like really showering them with praise even if you're having to guide them through this right because this is something that they're still learning and then you can guide them through uh, the process of uh, putting away the dirty napkin or whatever walk them to the trash can open the trash can and say okay drop it drop it um, you can keep your language very simple but again you want to assist them in the cleanup process I think that goes a long way and not a lot of people talk about this but the natural consequence of making a mess should be that you clean it up <laughs> I always say, huh, it's okay to make a mess, but we have to clean it up now. It's a very positive process, right? It's not punitive. We're not upset, but it's like, okay, if this happens, then this happens, and um, you need to clean up your mess. So my toddler, Jayla, she just turned two, and um, something that she likes to do during mealtime is throw her fork. So what do I do? I calmly get her down from the table, and I tell her to pick up her fork, and then we resume mealtime. <laughs> Because the natural consequences is if you throw your fork, I'm not going to go grab you another fork. I'm not going to go pick that up. You need to go pick that up. And so she learns, okay, if I throw my fork, I need to go pick it up. Now, if she continues with this, then that's my cue. She's ready to play, really. Uh, this is a little bit of a game, and she's not really interested in eating anymore. And so I give her that warning, hey, if you throw the fork again, mealtime is going to be over. I'm going to think you're ready for mealtime to be over. Okay, you're done. And then, you know, we end mealtime and there's no stress, there's no pressure, there's no resentment, <laughs> ideally. What do you do if 20 minutes later they're like, okay, I'm ready to eat? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh my gosh. Um, well, I think it depends. I think it's a case by case basis. Um, I think the first couple times that happens, you can be a little bit more flexible in your approach. Um, and before you end mealtime, I think the biggest thing is letting them know, okay, you can have your snack or we'll be ready to eat again at such and such time or after such and such to give them like a concrete marker of when they can expect another snack. So you can, you know, start by being a little bit flexible. Okay, you're hungry now. Um, I'll, I'll get you a snack or I'll, you can give them, I really think you should give them what they were eating originally. Um, instead of trying to make them something else. And then, um, over time though you're gonna want to kind of phase that out ideally just so that they learn that um, when it's time to eat it's time to eat and they get that natural consequence of ooh, I have some hunger I'm experiencing that uncomfortable feeling in my body I better eat at mealtime because um, that's the time to eat um, and so again Going back to my previous tip, be sure to kind of get on some kind of schedule if you're noticing this is an issue for you um, and try to limit the grazing so that in fact when they show up to mealtime they are hungry. All right, that's it for today's video. Um, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and, uh, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.